Oh, okay. We are at video response number three. I got a few more questions, more stragglers who've asked some questions that we need to answer. It is again early in the morning here, and I am going to endeavor to answer your questions. It was a uh, late night last night, was up editing the new episode of Mini Gup, which you guys will hear. Let's see, today is Monday, so you guys will hear it tomorrow, manana. Uh, if any of you are keeping up with my Twitter, you saw that I was not in full control of my senses when I was editing Mini Gup, so... Uh, yeah, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go follow me on Twitter and see. I don't want to offend anybody's sensibilities or something like that. Anyway, all right, we're going to the questions. And where is my first question? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Scrolling, scrolling. Okay, today we're starting off with Sam. Sam says, you always come across as a funny guy. I know, thank you. But what do you get serious about? Uh, you're really going to ask me this question at 6.40 in the morning. Well, uh, uh, what do I get serious about? Well, I do get serious about my coffee. Got to get serious about my coffee because it's so good. Uh, I get serious about money. Yeah, nobody's stealing my moolah. I got 99 problems, and they're all about money. Nah, I'm kidding, but I'm not. No, I get serious about money and, and relationshipy things, and like I said in the other one, pooing. Uh, you know, just the normal stuff. What everybody gets serious about. Next question comes from Roxas21691. Ooh, that's kind of long, but I like it. I like the numbers. They're kind of sexy. Says, do you think video games changed your lifestyle? Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, did video games change my lifestyle? You know, honestly, they may have a little bit. Um, I wouldn't say that video games themselves necessarily changed my lifestyle. I think what video games has brought me to has changed my lifestyle more than anything else. And I mean that from the perspective of now I'm working for Gaming Union as the managing director, um, which really is my full-time job. So, yes, I do think that video games changed my lifestyle I don't I don't know if they changed my lifestyle from playing them as much as they have as much as the industry has just from providing me a job and other cute fun stuff like that what I don't know okay next question is from hunter slasher 13 who has two questions First one says, if the zombie apocalypse happened right now, which three other people would you choose to be on your zombie survival team? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, well, first would have to be the wife. Uh, you know, I, I do have to say I would I would have my wife be on the first zombie apocalypse team. Then I would uh, probably get Justin Timberlake to come with me because uh, the dude's pretty friggin' awesome at everything he does, so I imagine he's probably going to be pretty sweet when he's killing zombies so we'll get him and plus i just like to hear him sing he can serenade us to sleep <sighs> that's so cool uh and then the third person who would i want as my third person maybe mr t yeah because he would pity the fool who tries to eat my brains or whatever mr t would say to that i don't know but yeah he'd be kind of good i think at killing zombies i don't know wheatley stop clawing up my leg ow uh yeah so to recap my wife uh justin timberlake and probably mr t or that black guy from uh the green mile he would probably do well too i can't remember his name but anyway next question from hunter slasher 13 is also if your first zombie kill was someone who was close to you who would it be and why well you know i've, I've already killed daryl multiple times throughout these questions so um We'll just, you know, don't ever say that I'm not one for tradition or for habit. So I'll just go ahead and say, uh, Daryl. I'll probably kill Daryl. That would 
that might be fun. He'll be like, I want to eat your zombie brains. And well, he, well, I won't be a zombie, but he'll be like, I'm a zombie and I want to eat your brains. And I'll be like, no, sir. <laughs> and that was a gun sound, kind of, but not really. So yeah, I'll kill, I'll kill Daryl first. <laughs> All right, next question is also from Sam. He split them up. Ooh, he has two questions this time. He says, why did you opt to answer the first round of questions at 6.30? Um, because it's first thing in the morning, and it's good for me to get it out of the way quickly. And, yeah. Yeah, I kind of like why I'm doing them this early uh, but the one thing about doing it this early is that I do have to have my coffee break mm. oh oh I had to put some s so what was I about to say but I had to put some extra espresso in this mocha today mmm because I cannot get the engine going today. Uh, second question from Sam is, uh, what YouTube channels do you subscribe to and watch regularly? Uh, well, I subscribe to myself and I watch myself in my own videos. And I'm like, that dude is awesome. He's so sweet. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, but when I'm not checking myself out, um, let's see, on YouTube, I probably focus mostly on uh, Toby Turner, of course, as most people do. And uh, the other would be Philip DeFranco. Those are probably my two favorites on YouTube. Uh, but really, I watch a lot of stuff outside of YouTube. Um I follow uh, a lot of things on The Escapist, Zero Punctuation, Jimquisition, uh, and one of my new favorites, um, or recent favorites, has been Movie Bob. Uh, his series, both of his series, Escape to the Movies and The Big Picture. Um, outside of The Escapist, I follow a lot of the stuff on Penny Arcade. I am a big fan of the Penny Arcade uh, series. Um, as well as Extra Credits, which is done by a good friend of mine, Mr. Daniel Floyd. Oh, Daniel, you're so sexy. <laughs> oh, don't know what just happened there. But yeah, Extra Credits is fantastic. And then probably my current favorite show uh, are two things. It's actually made by the two same people, which is uh, uh, Blamimations and uh, Chris and Scott's The Scott and Chris Show. Um, which are made by two guys, uh, Chris Straub and Scott Kurtz. Uh, they are two hilarious bastards. They're so funny. And I watch them all the time. And those are some videos that I watch. And so now we're going on to the next question, which is from the Finrear, who says, Is your cat witty and or prone to accidents like his namesake? Well... I wouldn't say that Wheatley is witty. I would say that he has his very stupid moments. Probably more often than not. He has this thing where if he tries to make a jump or tries to do something super smooth and he doesn't do it properly and he falls and whatnot, he just kind of looks around and is like, I meant to do that. Now I'm going to lick myself. And then he just he just kind of walks off like, oh yeah, I'm awesome. He's kind of like the Barney Stinson of cats. But at the same time, he is very, oh, that's a coffee burp. Oh, that deserves two sips of coffee. Oh, there's one sip. There's two sips. I should really be on Sesame Street. I could I could do the counting game. Two, two sips of coffee. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. Ah, I'm awesome. Uh, so what was I saying? Wheatley. That's right. Wheatley. Uh, what was I saying about Wheatley? Uh, conniving. That's right. He is very conniving. He does things he knows he's not supposed to. He'll just look at me, look at me, and then wait for me to go in the next room. And then when I do, he's like, I'm jumping up on the kitchen counter, bitch. Ah! And then when I walk in, he's like, yeah, I'm up here. You can't do anything. What? And then when I walk over to him, he jumps down and runs away. He knows what he's doing. And then just a little 
bastard, Wheatley, who is actually now clawing at my leg. What do you want? I have fed you. Do you require love? Okay. Uh, yes, so that that is Wheatley. And so our next question comes from Raging Sky King, who says, Is it still on? Um, it's always on, son, to the break of dawn. Uh, but other than that, I don't know what you mean by is it on. What is on? Well, the TV's not on, but my computer's on. But the light's not on, but my computer's on. Wait, I said computer already. Damn. Oh, well. Uh, if so, will you ever take the career path of directing? I remember that you studied film, right? Well, you are right. Yay! Ding! Tell him what he's won, Johnny. Uh, I don't know what that meant. Okay. Um, do, will I ever take the career path of directing? Uh, honestly, probably not. Uh, it's always possible, but... If I were to do anything like that, I would probably be more in the role of a producer. The person who's making sure that everything's getting done. Yeah, keeping lines of communication opium. That actually kind of sounds like opium. I meant to say open, but oh well. But no, I don't think I'd ever be a director. I'd probably be a producer. The man behind the scenes making everybody dance like Puppets. Ah, dance for me, puppets. Move the way I want you to. Ah. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> uh, oh, which voice at the beginning of the day is not a good idea. All right. Next question is from Bexen, also known as Bex. Who asks, have you ha ever had... Blah, blah. i show that again. Have you ever had any gaming crushes on any characters from any video game you've played? Ooh. Well, I would say my biggest crush doesn't come from a uh, video game character per se, but a person who is in a video game. And that would be, oh, the ever so lovely Stephen Fry. I love that man. He is perfect in every way and I, I love him so much and he's in uh, little big planet one and two he might be in another game i don't honestly remember but he's in little big planet as the narrator and uh i like him a lot he is so sexy uh in terms of actual video game characters that i've had crushes on um i don't know oh uh, that's a nice burp interlude um I mean, there are characters that are hot. Let's not let's not deny it. There are some good-looking female characters who are like... I don't know what I was going to say there. I lost all train of thought. Probably something inappropriate. That's all right. But, no, in terms of gaming crushes, women in games who I thought are wanted to be alive, probably not. I don't think I ever had anything like that. Um, and then our final question comes from Red Rose, Miss Banaz, who says, if I can find the question, here it is. Have you ever heard a song that you would say, quote, defines you or fits your personality perfectly? Hmm... That's a good question. And the answer is, no, not really. And now, coffee break. Or, as we have said in the past, a mocha moment. Mm. Oh. Yeah, but, uh, no, I don't really know if I have a song that I would say defines me. Um... Not really not defining my personality. There are probably pieces of music that define or that would help illustrate my feelings and my mood at a time, but not necessarily uh, my personality, because my personality is uh, it's a bit crazy, and I'm okay with that. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, no song defining personality, no personality defining songs. Only mood and feelings. Feelings, such strong feelings. It kind of sounded like a song, but not really. Kind of just crazy talk. 
Yeah. So, that is the end of this episode of questions or interview or community spotlight. That's it. Yeah, I figured it out. Uh, If you have more questions, you can, of course, ask them in the thread or wherever it goes. And, yeah. So, um, I don't think I have anything more to say except... Yeah, I still don't have anything more to say. So, if you have questions, you can always ask them in the thread or online or wherever you want to. And just send out good thoughts and I will answer them and all that jazz. And and then we will go from there. But until next time, my people, stay cool and uh, make sure you live long and drink coffee. Peace out.